I have a lot of questions about God, and I'm pretty sure I'm not alone. While I've traveled the world and made some very intense movies about faith and Christianity, I'm actually left with more questions than answers. So I wanted to make a show where we can ask open, honest questions and wrestle with them together. If our faith isn't rooted on solid ground, we'll be shaken by the first wave of doubt that comes our way. So let's work on our foundation together. Let's ask questions with God. We've got a very special guest with us here uh, today. We have Aunt Patsy of Finger of God fame. Yes. So, um, what was the what was the miracle that that happened to you? God gave us gold teeth. Hold on. Did you hear that? God gave us gold teeth. I should probably stop it here and explain a few things. You're probably wondering who these people are. Well. I can assure you they aren't crazy. In fact, that's Aunt Patsy, and that's Uncle Bob. Now, I'm not the type of person who just believes everything he hears, but when your own family, who you've known your whole life and you know is on the up and up, tells you that, well, this happened to them in church? Let's just say it makes you start to question a few things. So I began to wonder, well, if God put gold teeth in somebody's mouth, what else was he up to? I decided to travel the world to find out. And let me tell you, if you think this is weird, it's about to get a whole lot weirder. Well, we went to Toronto. Um, A lot of the reason we went to Toronto was because of your folks and what was going on at their church in Michigan. They had... uh, had experience with the Holy Spirit that we never had, and we just wanted more. And our our marriage had a very rocky type foundation. <laughs> and uh, there were times when I didn't particularly want to pursue it anymore. I wanted to give up. I couldn't give up because of God. I just I all I remember telling your mom, who was always the one that I went to uh, with the heartache, was I. I can't give up because I have to prove what God can do. Mm-hmm. I ha- if God can't help us and save our marriage, then what else? What else is there? I have to prove that he's big enough for this. And so with that tenacity, um, you know, we, hung, we hung in there. And so we went to Toronto just for, uh, there was a, they had marriage encounter thing. We were there for like three or four days. We had our own counselor who got to some bottom, my, uh, Bob had, um, not that he was the whole uh, pro- problem uh, in our marriage, but he had come from a very volatile home uh, with a very rageful dad and, you know, had some, some things in his past that, that affected him that way and affected our marriage. And God just reached in at that, at that time and where he dealt with issues uh, which really gave us hope. And then when we went to the services, uh, I can remember walking into Toronto. And this, this was all new to us, and I was terrified. I was terrified of the worship. <laughs> I did not know how to do this, you know, high worship stuff. And, and you know, I, I grew up Mennonite, and, you know, your hands are supposed to be down here, and people are falling all over. And I loved it. It wasn't like I felt critical of it. I wanted it, but I, how do you do it? How do you get your hands? up there you know and 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 I we we got there late that very first session and I can remember um I was talking to God about it I said I really I don't want to be scared anymore and I felt this it was like you know you have this little bow and it was like he pulled the string of the Mm. bow and the bow I was free Hmm. I was just instantly free, and I wow. all of a sudden worship was fun, and we had fun. So the night that uh, I, I think it was a, it was the last night of that particular conference, and people were getting gold teeth all over. One woman had gotten five gold teeth, wow. and um, you know it was just this loose <laughs> can and atmosphere. You know everybody <laughs> going crazy, and we were sitting in a cluster. Yeah, your mom was there, and your sister Danielle was there, and our daughter, and. And actually, the highlight of this night for me was our son, Bobby, was there. And he had been my prodigal son for several years. And just a few months before this, 
he had come back to Jesus. He had given his heart to the Lord and given up all his drugs and stuff. Well, that's, he was here. What more mattered? I mean, here, and he, wow. we, we were, as we were listening to John Arnott um, interview people about the gold teeth, he was, they were shining flashlights in their mouths to mm. verify the gold teeth and stuff. I've been a clencher all my life, and uh, I've crushed, actually cracked all my teeth. And then after that girl went up and she got a gold tooth, you, you, you prayed another prayer for gold. And I, I got five gold crowns. Carol. I mean, it's unbelievable, really, isn't it? And Bobby said, uh, Mom, open your mouth. I said, why? Because everybody around us had mirrors out, checking it for gold teeth. <laughs> and I wasn't. I was the only one. I knew God wouldn't give me a gold teeth. I didn't need one. I knew he loved me. I, I had faith up to the wazoo, and uh, I didn't need a gold tooth. I mean, I wanted one, but I knew he wouldn't give me one, you know, because it wasn't necessary. <laughs> so... Bobby says, Mom, open, open your mouth. And I said, why? And he said, and then he told me later that in his mind, he saw, I have a, a gold dome ring. It's just plain, just like a dome. That's all it is. And he said, that came into his mind. And he said, he, he knew that something was in my mouth. So I opened it up and he said, you've got a whopper in there. So everybody wanted to see and it, go up and tell John, go up and tell John or not, you know. So I said, well, no, I said, that other lady got five. I only got one. <laughs> no, no, you've got to go tell him. So I did, you know, we were all barefoot. I ran up and stood in line and I came with um, several family members. In fact, my daughter's lying out there on the floor right now. But I just want to mention this before I tell you what, what God did for me. Well, he's touched all of us. It's been so fun to compare notes it's when we go to meals, what God's doing for us. But I just really want to encourage those of you who are praying for prodigal sons and daughters. Four and a half months ago, our 23-year-old prodigal son came back to Jesus, and he's just transformed, and he wanted to come to Toronto, and he even... Uh, he travels with a band as a sound engineer, and he gave up a big paycheck this week to come here before he goes on tour. And it's just all week long. He's been sitting beside me, and I just can't believe that, I, you know, after all those years of prayer, that he wow. loves Jesus. And we were sitting back there, and for some reason he turned to me and he said, Mom, open your mouth. And I said, why? And he said, did you get any gold teeth last night? And I said, well, no. Open your mouth. And I opened up my mouth, and every, all, all those who were around me said, you've got a gold fill. You've got a gold crown. So that's, they made me come up here. They said, you've got to go. They... Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to see it too, you know. Oh, my gosh. It's huge, isn't it? <laughs> and I would never pay a dentist to put gold in my mouth. I'm too cheap for that. So sure. You want to see as well, don't you? <laughs> Come on in, Jim. Um, it's a little tricky, you know, because they're always toward the back. But anyway, open your mouth and tip your, tip your face down just slightly. Wow. There we are. Where is your son? Where are you, young man? Come on, come on, I want to pray for you. This is great. Hallelujah. You know, sound engineers are in great demand in the body of Christ. You know that? You don't have to put up with that rock music all the time. I mean, they, Stretch your hand toward him. Isn't that right, Bill? Lord, I thank you for what you've done in this young man. 
You put glory in his mother's mouth. And he was the first to see it. Let your awesome presence come upon him, Lord, and light that, light a fire within him. Passion for Jesus. In the name of Christ Jesus the Lord, let it come. Well, it was just excitement, you know, excitement was in the air. And, and then after the service, well, the service went till, you know, way past midnight. And I was in the line going to the bathroom and I had my mouth open showing people my tooth so that my mouth you know, I just got sore because <laughs> everybody went all, all the way into the stall. I had my mouth open showing people my because everybody was so excited. And I noticed that because everybody wanted a gold tooth. But people were so excited, no matter whom God touched. That, that was, I remember that, that was special. And then I came out of the bathroom and everybody was surrounding Bob, saying, what's the matter, what happened? He has two gold teeth, found out, you know. So that was, that was exciting. And it was just, um, it, it, it felt like, I couldn't believe that God did that to me. I mean, it was, I never expected it never asked for it, but when he touches you unexpectedly like that, it's, um, don't really know what to do with it. Now, didn't Uncle Bob, didn't he not check for a while? Like, I thought, before I remember the story, like, nobody really... No, it was midnight before they... Okay, because yeah. it was like... Yeah. Because he was kind of like, well, I'm not going to look in my mouth because yeah. obviously I'm not getting one. Well, it was Doug and Christy. Yeah, it was you know, Doug, were, were there, Doug right? Jones. Who yeah, Doug, Doug and, and Doug would kept on, some friends of ours that were there and kept on prodding Bob and Bob said, no, no, no. You have to understand Bob's like your size, right? Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah, uh, and, uh, uh, But eventually somebody looked and he had two big ones in there. <laughs> and that's going to be significant in this thing down the road. Yeah. You know, we were trying to figure, I mean, we as a family were trying to figure out I mean, I was in a different. I was like, <laughs> we'll go there. Different but time like, zone. Yeah, I was. Uh, but you know, we're, you guys are trying to figure out why would God, why would God do this? And you, so you actually, it was like a short time later, you felt the Lord get, yeah. kind of gave you the yeah. reason of why this happened. For I, I really did, and I was praying, and 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 I was asking God in prayer. I said, God, why did you do this? And then God showed me something. See, I know Patsy very well, and I know, and my wife there. They're, these are both godly women, and they have walked with the Lord all their lives. And I can't think of anybody that are deeper wells than Patsy and, and Linda in terms of their spiritual life. Uh, but Bob came from a, a non-Christian background, and he came to the Lord fairly late in life. Um, and when you have a wife that's walking in these kinds of things, you know, you can, um, and, and Bob was an ex-football player, you know, he was a little All-American, you know, was drafted by a bunch of NFL teams. So this is a man's man. But, but when it came to spiritual things, Bob always felt very insecure because he had a wife that was very powerful in these things. And so when, as I was praying about this, the first thing God said to me, if I remember, if I remember correctly, was that Patsy has all her life. I'm going to get all teared up about this. <laughs> Says Patsy has followed me all of her life. I'm just, I just want to bless her. But then he said this to me. He said, Bob has always felt like a second class citizen in the kingdom hmm. because his wife is so strong and he sees himself as being very little in the kingdom of God. And so <clears throat> I wanted to give to Bob. I wanted him to know how important he was to me. So I gave him two. And I thought that was so, then I, I shared it with Bob and I don't know why I'm getting emotional, I just do. <laughs> so I shared that with Bob, and Bob, I know that meant something to Bob because Bob began to realize, oh my gosh, God loves me so much. I mean, why doesn't he give my wife two and just give me one? That's the way it should be because there's this great mm -hmm. insecurity. But no, he gave me two. You know, that's, that's like the honored gift that he gave to him. It's just a little tooth, but I mean... Hey, listen, you know, there's not that many people walking around with a special gift like that in their mouth from God, you understand? And it just, it really did something, I think, for Bob's faith at that point to realize how much God loved him and given him two, and he only, when he only gave the spiritual one in the family <laughs> one, that said something to him. So I think it was a prophetic word that God was speaking through those teeth. Um, and I really do believe that, that not only that, but I think that that was a sign too, because, you know, teeth are in relationship with each other. 
And you know their 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 marriage was rocky, you know, and it's had it's had its, its ups and its downs. But you know, I think God was also saying, you know, I want to I want I really want to heal this marriage. I, I want to do something with this. And you know, that was kind of the beginning of some of the counseling and some of the breakthroughs for for Bob in this. And and uh, yeah, so I, I think there was more to this picture too. So there's there's many facets to why God would do this. And he is sovereign. God can do what he wants. Yeah. It seems supernatural to us, but it's very natural to God. Yeah. Like another thing too is that, as I mentioned to you before we started, every time you release a film and now you're doing this, Bob and I, our marriage comes under attack. Mm. And I feel like even these, these weeks getting ready for this, it's been like walking through sludge, mm. <laughs> spiritually, to walk through sludge every day, having to come before God and say, take this away today. Mm -hmm. Learning what I knew before and judged other people for not knowing. I've always gotten so impatient with Christian women who worry. I don't want them to worry. <laughs> you can't worry and trust God at the same time, you know, and that's kind of been my mantra. And I've had, that's been challenged all over again. Uh, not that I've become a worrier, but that, I've, that it's, been, it's been a temptation. Yeah. I've had to practice it all over again and, and like learn it in a deeper level. And it's, it's true with anything that we walk with, with God, whatever he teaches, it, there's always a deeper element to mm -hmm. it. Deep and, that's, and just so people know, that's why Bob's not here, right? He's like, it's physically well, he, under attack. He's, yeah, yeah he's, he's sick. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's in a lot of pain and um, just can't travel. You know, I'd love to ask you, you two especially this, when you get touched by God in, in a way like this, is there a price that you have to pay? Well, this it is sounds a, like it. This is a fun moment for me, Patsy. I've never told you the story. 2003, I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Had an open vision as a Baptist. I wrote a <laughs> book on this. It's called Signs, Wonders, and a Baptist Preacher, How Jesus Flipped My World Upside Down. Five foot 11, 185 pound Jesus with hair down to here, a nine foot angel on one side, a six foot angel on the other walks up to me. The nine foot angel had a sword. <laughs> From that moment until now, it's cost me everything. Mm. And I've never been more excited. The fun moment for uh, today, Patsy, is 2003, when I had my encounter with, with Jesus, I started asking him, I said, I, I wanna just experience everything your kingdom offers no matter what it costs me. And I really meant that. And I was in Atlanta, and I said, I ask you to open my eyes to the angelic realm. And I heard loudly, you're not mature enough yet. And I said, okay. You know, none taken. None taken. <laughs> and, um, so that's why I haven't seen an angel. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this is after already seeing Blind Eyes Open. And a couple of years later, when was Finger of God released? 2007, eight. Yep, okay. A couple of years later... Uh, at our church, I started to preach that we need to be open to a God outside of the box. And we just need to really go for it no matter what it cost us. And gold dust started manifesting. I didn't know what it was. I had no idea. And I just thought, this is going to be exciting. God's moving. Hey, it's time to go. I mean, we're, we're about, this church is about to explode. We lost 40 families. Wow. We had oil appearing in people's hands, gold dust everywhere. I bet I asked God a thousand times, what is it? And he never would tell me. And then I stumbled across this movie from this fellow <laughs> called Finger of God, and he interviews you. And I found someone of like, okay, well, I'm not crazy. Still didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. And then he was a bigger skeptic than I was in the movie. I'm like, this guy, he didn't, he didn't know what it is either. And what is all this stuff? From that point till now, when these encounters happen, I have found that very rarely is everyone very happy about this. <laughs> uh, um, I was in a meeting not too long ago. Gold dust manifested all over my boots. I looked down. I, I, I just don't make a big deal out of it. The most awkward moment, and this is with witnesses, we had about a 60-foot gold cloud, wow. glory cloud. I don't know, not in the spirit, in the room manifest in a 9 o'clock service. Not many people were in the room yet, maybe only a couple of hundred people. I asked God what it was. He didn't tell me. The way that I'm wired, 
I don't have to understand. I'm not obsessed with it. No, I don't have to go get seven prophetic handbooks and people praying all over the country. Here's what I told the church. Let's just keep our eyes on the father of this thing. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just stay there. And what we're noticing now, years later, the families that thought we would become a crazy church are realizing that we value the word. We're just open to whatever God wants. And if he wants to give you a gold tooth, then, man, I'll yep. cheer that. In the book of Colossians, they got in trouble because they started chasing angels. <laughs> what, what we don't want to ever do, at least what I'm leading, I don't ever want to go after the stuff. Just go after the Father, and then don't be surprised when you build intimacy when the stuff starts manifesting. I know that it cost you. Oh, yeah, yeah, talk about what happened to you. Yeah, you know, I mean, through through meeting Darren, and um, uh, you gave me your Finger of God film. I took it home. I think you gave me a, a, a book as well. And I got home, and my wife was actually passing a kidney stone. And she's like, ah, do we got anything to watch? And she watched Finger of God. <laughs> And she, I soon get a text, who is this guy? Because she watched the first 15 minutes of it and was mm -hmm. like, we're not ever having him in. <laughs> <laughs> because it was outside of our grid completely. Well, then we watched Furious Love and had a huge time of repentance. And uh, during this season of our pastoring, we were deeply frustrated. We, we, we had realized we'd just become angry shopkeepers, <laughs> you know, and, and we knew there had to be more. Uh, and we were bored. We were disillusioned a little bit. Um, and we watched Furious Love. Something happened that made us realize there is more. And then I texted you that night. Mm -hmm. I said, we have to have you in. And so he came in the following January the next mm -hmm. year and, and came at the end of the month there. Ministered that morning. Already people were freaking out, not even knowing. You didn't even do anything. You just ministered how you minister. But already I had uh, a couple in our church going, there's something off, there's something wrong, and there's this and that. And so stuff was already stirring. That night we show finger of God. And then we do an altar call. We do ministry. And you, you kind of haphazardly said, who knows? Maybe some of you will even get gold teeth. You know, you I literally go, made a joke. He made a joke. I was joking. And nothing, you would agree that nothing in that moment of altar call, there was no explosive things. It was pretty gentle. And um, it wasn't our grid for people to fall out. So it, we just walked away from that moment. We drove you down to your guys' house. And, oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, and so yeah. first thing I did, I was like, nice to meet you. Show me your teeth. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and I saw that, and my buddy that was with me all the way back, we had these crazy conversations of why, why would God do this? And well, the following Thursday, I start getting, I mean, my text messages, snowstorm hit Denver, everybody's locked in. I start getting my phone blown up with pictures coming in. People were sending these pictures of getting gold teeth and gold fillings. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> from your church? Yeah, I wish I'd have said, wow, I, I said something different. Um, yeah, from the church, a worship team. and, and Get your resume ready. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so it, it, was, it was, I don't know how to describe it other than in one moment of time, I'm confronted with the greatest unbelief of my life, mm. but also awe. Mm. And that following Sunday, before I was getting up to minister, I was in the back room where I go, and I'm literally rocking back and forth going, no, Lord, please don't. Don't make me share this. I was. I was like, I don't want to. I don't want to. I know what's going to happen. I had oil execs in there. I had athletes. I had all these people. We weren't a huge church, but we were, we were an influential church. And I just knew if I told about this, what was coming. And I got up and I just preached out of Mark 9 when the dad of the epileptic had the kid that had the epileptic seizures and disciples are like why couldn't we do this and the man cries out i believe but help my unbelief and as soon as i said that the Lord, it was like the holy spirit said share now <laughs> it's like wow oh. and somehow i think the holy spirit's pretty funny so we i shared it kind of in a funny light way uh as i'm sharing the testimony of the gold teeth the things that were happening people came up after and testified while I'm sharing it, they felt like their mouth started changing. They felt like they were at a dentist. And by the end of that service, we had about 12 people that either had gold teeth or gold fillings. And Out of like how many? Uh, maybe 200, you know, and we'd be suddenly, we went from like, <laughs> hey, we love Jesus and we're charismatics with seatbelts. That's what I called us, <laughs> charismatics with seatbelts. Now all of a sudden, God just violently ripped off the seatbelt and hit the eject button, you know, and we're... <laughs> 
we're, we became this church. Everybody's looking at each other's mouths and we're all in awe and we're all freaked out. And, and, and it, during that time, it, 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 it activated something inside of my wife and I, who were these frustrated, burned out pastors that, that made us fall in love with Jesus all over again. We felt so privileged and honored and special and also not knowing. I think I texted you, called you like, you weren't that helpful. You were like, I don't know, bro, it's figure your, it out. It's your, pro- your problem now. Yeah, so you <laughs> figure it out. I was like, okay, thanks, bro. That's really helpful. <laughs> and uh, But I read Bill Johnson's book, When Heaven Invades Earth. I stayed down in my basement, locked myself in with the Lord. And uh, the way I'm wired, I like, okay, all of it. I want all of it. And when I was reading the, those words, it was like everything that was I read in that book was the cry of my heart. And so it opened up this whole view of the kingdom that I guess I never had. And so it, it triggered this, this, this overwhelming, if God can do this, then cancer doesn't have a chance. You know what I mean? It, it didn't make me go, oh, it actually triggered this awe of him and then a wantingness. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly I became more in love with him. And it's like the closer I got to him, I felt his love for people in a whole nother way. The very people two weeks before I wanted to leave, I now had compassion for. Hmm. You know, the prayer meetings I, I myself avoided, I now wanted to go to. And without exaggeration, I experienced retaliation, rejection from my spiritual mentors and fathers, my reputation with all the people. You know, I had a standing in the community, word starts getting out, and Schwartz has gone off the deep end. You know, that was it. He's, he's gone off the deep end. And um, I... I felt like the, the during that shaking, and I, I know I joke about thanks a lot, but actually it's it is a thanks a lot because mm-hmm. what I thought was gain was actually loss, mm-hmm. you know, and and now what I thought was so painful was gain. It's this it's that that kingdom thing, and and uh, in the processing of all that, we we lost our biggest givers. I felt like I was in a free fall. In the past, I would have been depressed and suicidal probably in my thinking and wanted to run. But it, it, it's like the, the Holy Spirit whispered to me and said, proud of you. It, it, you're finally learning what it means to be rejected for the anointing, not mm-hmm. just for being a grumpy pastor. You know, and, and I, I realized I was being rejected for Christ's sake, truly probably for the first time in my mm-hmm. ministry, I was actually being rejected for Christ's sake. Yeah. And with that, there was an unbelievable reward, and I, I, it was the kingdom. I got the kingdom. I wanted a church, but I got the kingdom. Hmm. And for me, wow. my 10-year yeah. journey since Finger and the story I just told you, I do it all over again. Yeah. I have found the deepest level of friendship that I do not believe I would have ever had if I would not have said yes to his same question. And I think that's the difference between the message of the kingdom and and just uh, really just the born again message. You know, Jesus never preached the message of born again. Mm. He only talked about it one time in four gospels mm-hmm. at three o'clock in the morning. Right. <laughs> but he talked about kingdom, 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 kingdom. And in the kingdom, you just, you don't have it your way. You say yes to a king. And once you say yes to a king, your life's on his terms. And what I've learned in 10 years, and I, I, could, I could talk two hours about encounters. What I've learned in 10 years, he's the nicest person I've ever met. Mm-hmm. He's a supernatural God. And he's for me. 